today we will study about subject and predicate but before we start about subject and predicate let's uh, revise about what is sentence so what is a sentence a group of words that contains a verb and makes complete sense is called a sentence and we have also studied about types of sentences like declarative sentences imperative sentences interrogative sentences and exclamatory sentences so let us see few examples the students studied hard for the test my mom loves me very much birds are flying in the sky so as we can see in these sentences that we are talking about something or we are talking about somebody like in the sentence the students studied hard for the test so about whom we are talking we are talking about the students so the students is the subject it is the subject so subject is that part of the sentence about which we talk about my mom loves me very much so in this sentence we are talking about my mom so my mom is the subject birds are flying in the sky so about what we are talking about we are talking about birds so birds are the subject secondly we see children that we have got something to say about the subject so the part of the sentence in which we say something about the subject is called the like in this sentence the student studied hard for the test so we know that the student is the subject and what are we talking about the subject like what we are talking about the students studied hard for the test so this part studied hard for the test is the predicate it is the predicate similarly in second sentence what are we talking about my mom loves me very much so this part is the predicate birds are flying in the sky what are we talking about birds are flying in the sky so this is the predicate and remember children verb always comes in the predicate part like here study is the verb comes in the predicate part loves is the verb in the predicate part are flying is the verb it is in the predicate part so we see children that a sentence has two parts subject means the part of the sentence in which the subject is mentioned is called the subject and the part of the sentence in which we say something about the subject is called the predicate so in these sentences we have seen that subject has come before the predicate here also the subject has come before the predicate here also and here but it is not always so children in interrogative sentence or maybe in uh, exclamatory sentence we say that the subject uh, may come after the predicate or a part of the predicate may come before the subject so let's see few examples so children let's see these examples how are you what is your name where are you going can you tell me which type of sentences are these yes they are interrogative sentences now uh, in previous examples uh, we saw that the subject was coming before the predicate so it was very easy to find out the subject but let's see what happened in this how are you so we are talking about who we are talking about you so you is the subject but if it's in all the cases it's not always easy to find out so what you can do there's a little trick you can use that you can rephrase the sentences rephrase the sentences means you can just simply rearrange the position of the words so see here what is the verb r is the verb so let's rephrase the sentence like uh, you are how if we rearrange the sentence like this we know that about whom we are talking we are talking about you or you can put the question as who are how so we get the answer you so if we see in the original uh, statement what i have written how are you in this the the subject is coming you and as you can see and obviously this is the predicate part verb comes in the predicate so in this sentence we see that 
the subject is coming after the predicate and not before. What is your name? So let's again rephrase the um, sentence. If I write, see, is is the verb and write your name is what? So if I ask the question, what is what? Answer is coming, your name is what? So we see that your name is the subject. Okay? Here yeah, again, the subject is coming after the predicate. Next example, where are you going? So again, let's rearrange it. This is a verb. Let's put it like this. You, this is a verb, are going. You are going where? Now, who are going where? Answer is coming. Uh, you. So, it is the subject. So, here we see that the subject is coming somewhere in, uh, between the, in between the predicate. Predicate is what are going and this is the subject. So, children we see that subject may come after the predicate or subject may come somewhere in the middle of the sentence. So, you have to find out what is the sentence and remember subject always answers the question who or what followed by the verb. As I said, you are how, how, who are how, answer is you. Your name is what, answer is what name is what, so you get your name is what. Who are going where, you are going where. So you can put the question who or what followed by the verb and then what the answer you get, that will be the subject. So let's see few examples of exclamatory kind of sentences. Okay children, these are the examples of exclamatory sentences. Let us find out how to find the subject in these cases. What an intelligent boy. He is, as we know, we, the exclamatory sentence is always followed by an exclamatory mark. What an intelligent boy he is. So let's follow the same trick. Like we will rephrase the sentence. Like we will just you know, change the position of the words. So here, what is the verb here? Is this the verb? We know. So let's write it like this. He is what an intelligent boy. Children, you will write everything which is given in the sentence. You will not skip any word, okay? He is what an intelligent boy. Now, if I ask the question, who is an intelligent boy? So answer you are getting is he. And as I told you that subject always answers the question who or what followed by a verb. Remember to put the question before the verb and not after the verb. Otherwise you will get something else as an answer and that will give you the wrong subject. Okay? So who is what an intelligent boy? Answer is he is what an intelligent boy. So here we see in the sentence what an intelligent boy he is. So what is the subject? He is the subject. And what an intelligent boy is, is the predicate. Right? So you must be thinking why boy is not the subject because we are not getting boy as an answer. We are getting he as an answer. So he is the subject and not boy. Let's see second example. How was past the ocean is? So let's rephrase it. We know the verb is is. So let's write like this. The ocean is how was. See children, you don't have to write it like in rephrase order. You can just imagine it in your mind and you can find out the subject. Here I am writing so that you can understand it in a better way. So the ocean is how vast? Now if we put the question, what is how vast? How vast? You can answer the ocean is how vast, right? So as I told you, subject always answers the question who or what. So here, what is coming in the reply? The ocean. So we know that the ocean is the subject. And as you can see here also, subject is coming somewhere in between the predicate. Predicate is how vast is, right? Third sentence, how tall the man is. So 
So let's rephrase it again. We know is is the verb here. The man is how tall. So now if I ask the question, who is how tall? Answer is the man is how tall. So you are getting the answer, the man. So this is the subject. So children, in this way you can find out the uh, subject in uh, exclamatory sentences. And sometimes children, the subject is not even mentioned. It is understood. And what are those kind of sentences? Imperative sentences. In some sentences, the subject is not mentioned. Let's see a few examples of uh, those kind of sentences. So children, these examples are some uh, imperative kind of sentences like listen to me. Now can you tell me what is the subject here? See, if we again see the sentence listen to me, it means who will listen, whom you are saying. You listen to me, right? So here, you is understood. Even it is not mentioned at all, but it is understood that you listen to me. If I say the teacher comes in the class now and say, sit down. So sit down means who sit down? You sit down, right? So here also, subject is not mentioned, but it is understood. Give me a glass of water. It means you give me a glass of water. So subject is understood. So in these kind of sentences, sometimes subject is not mentioned, but it is understood. So uh, these kind of sentences you have to write by your own that the subject is you. So children, uh, I hope it is clear about subject and predicate.